Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. We're going to continue in the book of Mark. And we are in Through the Bible with Dr. McGee. And we are in Mark chapter 12. And I had to stop the last part one because I ran out of... Um, power battery power so this one I've charged it up should be enough to hopefully finish this chapter 12 yep we can do it all right let us go so we just got through reading that um the God is the God of the living not of the dead they do not know the power of God. Abraham is not dead. Isaac is not dead. Jacob is not dead. Their bodies were buried here in Hebron, but they are not dead. They have gone to be with him. That is where Christians are today that die in the Lord, friend. He is devastating in his answers <clears throat> to these religious rulers. Now we have another person coming to our Lord after hearing the discussion with the Sadducees. The, this is scripture, the great commandment. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mark 12, 28-29 This is a quotation from Deuteronomy 6, 4. It is not one of the Ten Commandments, but it is the greatest doctrinal statement in the Old Testament. Literally, it should read, Jehovah our God. Elohim, which is a plural, Elohim is the plural, is one Jehovah, Jehovah being God. So it says God, our Elohim, our, our plural God, meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, um, that's Elohim, and that is God, the, the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you think back to the day that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and when he came up out of the water, Heavenly Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And then the Holy Spirit, which is the third part of the Elohim, came down and lit on Jesus. And Jesus is the Son, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is the second part of the Elohim. By the way, you do not keep this commandment, my friend. Wait a minute. It's the... <clears throat> excuse me. So here, here we have... Um, Israel was to witness to, the, to a world of polytheism and idolatry concerning the unity of the Godhead, the Godhead, Elohim. The church is to witness to a world of atheism and unitarianism concerning the Trinity. We're supposed to witness to the world. To the world! And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And that was scripture found in Mark 12, verse 30. By the way, do you keep this commandment, my friend? If you say you don't need Christ as a Savior, that you obey God, then I ask you this question. Do you love God with all your heart and mind and soul? If you don't, 
then you are breaking his commandment and you need a savior. I know I need a savior. I don't measure up here. I wish I did. I love him, but not as I should. Okay, we're continuing in the, uh, through the Bible. And he was, um, Dr. McGee was just wishing that he did, um, I know I need a savior. I don't measure up. I wish I did. I love him, but not as I should. This, this scripture, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Mark chapter 12, verse 31. And he told me when I was in that prayer, I was finishing my prayer actually, and I had my hands raised up toward heaven, and he said, tell them, I want them to be more like me. And then he wanted us to love him with all his, our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength. And to love one another as, what love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And also he said, to love ourselves. <laughs> How can you love someone else if you don't know how to love yourself? Now, if you can measure up here, maybe you could apply for salvation on your own merit. Until you do, you need a Savior. Scripture. And the scribe said un unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none but other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man... <clears throat> After that, durst ask him any question. Mark chapter 12, verse 32 through 34. What the scribe said is certainly true. To love God and to love your neighbor is more than all offerings and sacrifices. Friend, may I say again, if you don't measure up to loving God with all your heart and understanding, and soul and soul and strength and to loving your neighbor as yourself then you need a savior turn to him now this ended the question period as far as men asking jesus questions was concerned the enemy could not trap him now jesus is going to do the questioning <clears throat> scripture the messiah and Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David said unto, said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my, on my, Excuse me, let me start that over. That was terrible. Whew. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple. How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said, The Holy Ghost, said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Mark chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. Right here, Jesus is teaching his own virgin birth. How could David in Psalm 110, where he is speaking of a future descendant of his, 
call his own great, 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 great grandson his Lord. Well, the only way he can call him his Lord is for him to be the Lord. Friend, the only way he can be the Lord is to be more than David's son. He must be virgin born to be the son of God. This is a great thought that our Lord is teaching here. Notice also that here Jesus definitely ascribes Psalm 110 to David. He says that David wrote this psalm by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that this psalm is speaking concerning him, the Messiah. Here, he says it out loud. <laughs> oh, thank God. So good. Scripture. <clears throat> and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feast, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Mark twelve thirty eight to 40 Jesus is teaching that privilege creates responsibility. He denounces the scribes because their lives contradicted the scriptures they taught. Their judgment will be more severe than those who have not heard the scripture. The widow's might, M-I-T-E. The final incident in this chapter shows Jesus doing an audacious thing that only God should do. He watched how the people gave scripture and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much mark chapter 12 verse 41 <clears throat> he has the authority today to stand over the taking of the offering in your church or wherever you are asked to give to some cause that is for God's work He's there to watch you, friend. He doesn't watch what you give. He watches how much you keep for yourself. Scripture. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, M-I-T-E-S, which make a farthing. Mark chapter 12, verse 42. He had noted that the rich cast in much. They were the big givers. Oh my, how we love the big givers. The rich gave generously, but he didn't commend them. He watched that widow, and she gave two mites. Compared to the wealth of that temple, friend, what she gave wasn't worth a snap of your fingers. But do you know what he did? He took those two mites and he just kissed them into the coin and told and the gold of heaven and made them more valuable than anything any rich man ever gave. Do you know why? Because he saw that she kept nothing for herself but gave all to him. Her love and devotion were in the gift. I tell you, that is the way he measures. Some folk ask whether they should give a tenth to God. My friend, how much do you keep for yourself? It's not how much you give to him. You're not required to give a certain amount or a certain percentage. The question is, how much do you really love him? The Lord is the one 
who watches how people give. It's not what they put in. The widow didn't give anything of good value, friend. I doubt that the treasurer paid much attention to it. But the Lord takes the two coppers of the widow and exchanges them for the gold of heaven. She didn't give a lot from her having a lot. She gave all that she had. She had no more. She gave everything that she had, she gave to God. While the rich people gave a lot of what they had, but they didn't give all of what they had. Amazing. Our God teaches us such beautiful lessons. He leads us along. <laughs> As we go stumbling through this world, how little we really know. But he, he teaches us nonetheless. He wrote a beautiful book for us to understand him. Understand what he would do, what he has done, how much he loves us, and what we should do, how we should do it. How we should care for one another. How we should love one another. And that we have a job to do. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wonder what he will say when we get to heaven. I wonder what he will say to me. I certainly hope that he tells me, well done my good and faithful servant. But that doesn't really matter. As long as I know he loves me. <laughs> and I do. But I want him to know how much I love him. We are so blessed here in America. But all is about to change because we didn't show him how much we loved him. We let so many things slip when it came to God. <clears throat> Prayer out of school. The Ten Commandments out of our government buildings. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Kill the baby in the womb. 60 million and Proverbs one of the things that he hates is the spilling of innocent blood we're guilty he gave us Trump and a chance to repent did we repent no we just relished and rolled around and just loved his gift of Trump Oh, it made our lives so much better. We had jobs, we had food, we had gas for our cars. We had justice. Even though for him, there was no justice and there was no peace. They never left the man alone. They haven't left the man alone yet. But then God said, well, I see that you like my gifts. I see how much you like my gifts. But I don't see how much you like me. That, my friend, is where we really messed up. And we're going to pay for it. Judgment is upon America. He's not turning back to us. America's never going to be great again. I asked. I asked him. No. Nope. Our glory's not coming back. We're going down. Down and down and down.
when God punished the Israelites, he really punished them. And he's really going to punish us. So I ask you and I tell you, prepare as best you can, because it's coming. And pray that you have the ability and the strength to stand. Let our Lord stand with you. And as always, I love you.